We head to Washington now. That's where the White House is facing scrutiny over Russia again. The question now is whether it's intentionally delaying new sanctions on Moscow. It's been over a month since the October 1st deadline for new sanctions against Russia, and the Trump administration has still not implemented them. The same legislation for the Russian sanctions also penalizes Iran and North Korea. It's a bill that got near unanimous congressional support back in August. Now, Republican senators are looking for answers on why there's been a delay. For more on this, I am joined by Richard Weitz. He is a senior fellow with the Washington-based think tank, the Hudson Institute. He joins us via Skype. And Richard, the Trump administration has missed its deadline uh, on implementing these new sanctions. How big is this, and how likely do you think that it was an intentional move? Okay, to be to be clear, the implementation date for the sanctions is mid-January. What they were supposed to have done a few weeks ago was tell Congress what they were going to do. They don't have to do it for until uh, for a few more months. Um, they've done that today. They've indicated a list of possible targets for the sanctions. They had a, a briefing, a video conference briefing, explaining the criteria they would use. Um, and that seems to have satisfied the critics. So the U.S. State Department said that it would sanction dozens of Russian companies. What's the reason behind this move? Well, the sanctions uh, that were adopted a few months ago by Congress, as you said, were on Korea, Iran, and Russia. With regard to Russia, there were several clauses. One was to uh, one of them was to focus on significant deals between the Russian national military industrial complex, the national security complex, and foreign entities, and to basically try and limit those by imposing various sanctions on them. And so that's what we're seeing today. We're getting a list of the possible sanctions. And the administration has been explaining that they've been trying to uh, de to approach foreign, a uh, non-Russian companies and people who might be involved, explaining to them the the risks they are facing and try and reach some kind of solution that would prevent them from being sanctioned. You know, they would sell off their Russia holdings or something like that. So, Richard, the department within state that oversees sanctions policy has been dissolved. It's part of a much larger move. But what does this tell you about the role of state? Right. Um, the uh, department was asked about that today in the video conference. And they said, you know, this was a small sanctions office. And they basically merged into a larger office. But there's still a bunch of officials who are involved with this. So I'm not too concerned about the ability to execute the sanctions, which many of which is undertaken by the Treasury Department, for example. Um, but it is true that the uh, Trump administration, when it came into office, wanted to reduce sanctions on not Russia, not increase them, and that President Trump was not very enthusiastic about signing this legislation. Um, not only because it interferes with his ability to improve relations with Russia, but also because it encroaches on his presidential power. Unlike President Obama, who could remove sanctions by his own will, basic executive action, uh, this, in this case, from now on, the Congress can block any attempt to remove or weaken sanctions. As always, Richard Weitz, thank you for that.